Hi and welcome to another video where the title accurately describes what the video is going to be about. I'm about to share with you my favorite way to handle loading states in Next.js. It's truly graceful. To understand why it works, how it works, let's first understand what the hell we're trying to avoid. So here's how to make your app not suck. Josh, what the hell are we looking at? This is the app we'll be looking at in code here in a second. We've got a very basic page. We've got an image with a product text to the right of it. And then below that we have recommendations. This part is static. Okay. We have this at build time, whatever. And this part, only these are dynamic, which means when the user visits this page with a the static data, these recommendations are then created and fetched at runtime, meaning we don't know their value beforehand because of course they differ per user. That's what recommendations are. And there's two approaches to this. As you can probably tell, one of them sucks and one of them doesn't suck. And the one that sucks is waiting for all the data and then loading the page. Let's take a look at the code and then see how to unsuck that. First off, what I just mentioned, static assets. This part right here are the static assets. If we take a look at what this looks like in the browser, switch over here, this part right here, these are the static assets. We have them at build time, for example, through revalidation or some sort. And um, these are not fetched when the page is requested, they are already there. And then these are fetched at runtime. So if I refresh the page, I implemented an artificial delay in each one of them. You can see up here, the page is currently loading because we are choosing the sucky approach where we wait for all the data and then load the page. So each of these components, the shoe, the plant, the car, and the watch, right? They are rendered down here. So we have the static assets and then below that, the dynamic recommendations, this part in the code right here. Take a second to look at it. This is this part right here, the, recomm the recommended stuff, this down here. And for each item, we are rendering a component called recommendation, which is a server component that takes one of these images, which corresponds to an image right here in the public folder. And this is what the recommendation component looks like. As you can see, we have a random delay between five and 10 seconds it takes for each image to load. And that is why when I reload this page, it takes so long to actually finish loading the page. You can see right here, it's still the old content. I pressed reload like five seconds ago, but it's still the old content. And now it has finally reloaded as you just saw. That's a horrible approach in writing your app. It's horrible for user experience to be specific because your page takes forever to load. And that's the sucky approach. We're waiting for all the data and then loading the page. So Josh, which approach is better? How can we not make our app suck? And the answer is we load the page first and then stream in only the data that is necessary. So before waiting for this dynamic data down here, the recommendations, we can already render out the static stuff, right? We don't need to wait for the recommendations to render out what we already have. So the solution is to split these recommendations from what we're initially rendering to drastically improve the page loading times. And the way we do that is super straightforward. Let's go back into the components. Each recommendation is a React server component. We're marking it as asynchronous, which means we can fetch at the top level of this component. This being a server component is important because this plays super well with React suspense and suspense is not Next.js specific at all. In React, it's used for the same purpose. So the only thing we need to do to make the user experience so much better is wrap this in a suspense that we get provided by React we can wrap the recommendation and then also include this line right here to tell Next.js, hey, this is fine. I know this is asynchronous, but that's valid syntax. And the suspense we have just created takes something called a fallback. And this fallback can be any JSX component. This could also be a string if you wanted to, but in our case, you mostly render out something like a skeleton. Let's keep it very simple and render out a loading period, period, period. Hit save and now take a look at what happens. When I reload the page, as you can see, there's a little flash of the content, which means the page has just reloaded. And then between five and 10 seconds, you can see right here, the content is being streamed in to the user interface, making for an immediate page load. And only then comes the necessary content that we are putting into our application. 
Just look at the data sequentially coming in, it's absolutely beautiful. There's the shoe, there's the plant, and now comes the car. And finally comes the watch. Hey, if you like the video, chances are you'll like this one as well, where I talk about five amazing open source projects to learn how to write proper good code from. That's it for me. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.